weed. It's the most popular drug in America. 22 million people smoke it regularly. There's rappers named after it. Chief Keef, Juicy J, Cannabis. There's a rapper called Cannabis. It's our most beloved drug in a weird way. Um, and we're here in Denver, Colorado, the capital of cannabis in America and probably the world, if you don't count Amsterdam. It's a shame. <laughs> it was almost perfect. <laughs> I mean, there are some studies that have come out from places like the National Institute of Drug Abuse, which who knows if they have an agenda, that say things like weed makes you lethargic, antisocial, underachieving. And yet there's other studies that seemingly come out on vicemedia.com every day that's like, weed will cure your backache. Weed will make you a better at painting. And uh, you know, there's that running joke that weed can cure everything. I think the answer is certainly somewhere in the middle. So Oliver and I started an experiment of sorts over the last four months, I cut out alcohol, marijuana, a few other things. What is that? Anyway, so I cut out a lot of things in the last four months. I've been able to do it before and after from being a daily pot smoker to someone who hasn't touched the stuff in four months. Except I let people blow it in my face sometimes. It's a little loophole I have, but we don't have to get into that. I still got some insights from the whole experience. I've lost dozens of friends doing this. Explain what you've been doing, Oliver. None of that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely none of that. So Oliver is our control experiment. And uh, basically, I had a few areas I wanted to explore. Does weed make you antisocial? That's an important thing for me. I'm a performer, I'm making videos, I'm trying to collaborate with other people much more often. Does it make me antisocial? Does it make me less hardworking? Does it prevent me from dreaming, both in the metaphorical sense and the literal sense? And does it make my dick shrink? That was another one, throw that in there, why not? But let's learn from the person who has embraced pot in what I would consider a healthy way. You're very hardworking, Oliver. Explain to the people what it does for you. Don't mind if I do. I actually can get into a creative flow state uh, easier when I smoke some sativa. And like my creative outlet is editing usually. So if I just start editing and then I smoke a little bit of sativa, I can just kind of edit that whole day if I feel like it. Like sometimes I'll be editing something and I'll finish it and it'll just be like fine. But if I smoke some weed and then go over and touch it up again, it's got this whole extra like bump of energy to it. And another one that happens is I actually have trouble eating a necessary amount throughout the day. And uh, particularly if like bulking and like putting on some like muscle weight and stuff. Oh yeah, it's working. Yeah, I, guess, I suppose it's largely due to marijuana because I can accidentally fast for like half a day, sometimes even like a full day, maybe just have like three eggs in the morning and then just kind of forget to eat. But if I'm smoking weed, like I'm gonna be eating larger portions and probably more portions throughout the day. Uh, so that's great for putting on muscle and just, uh, I guess being just healthier in general. Yeah, another big one too about weed is it helps you bond with other people that smoke weed, like on another level. Like if you invite somebody over and they do a favor for you and then you retrieve the favor by like smoking them out, you're best friends, like instantly. And you're like, you'll do something after you've just smoked weed, like you're friends now. For some reason, like maybe even just the ritual of like passing the pipe to each other and like taking a hit out of the same thing and like feeling the like marijuana bring your spirits up at the same time. Like, I don't know, there's kind of something magical about that. And if one person is smoking and the other person is sober, um, which used to happen with Devin so I started blowing smoke in his face and now he gets like a little bit high now. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> it's very weird and very uncomfortable <laughs> and no one likes doing it. And then the other one which originally I thought this was a con is that when I smoked weed I would get quiet and antisocial and like I didn't even think that I could perform stand-up after I got stoned and then like mostly this year I've kind of proved myself wrong which led me to believe that it's not the weed that's holding me back it's just enhancing that antisocial aspect in the beginning. And then if I get over that hump and get myself to go out and actually just do the mic and like talk to people and actually just like push myself out of that approach anxiety and just like really be in the moment, then some magical things can happen. So one thing about pot, like I'm a natural introvert, introvert and smoking weed is like an introvert. It's like, it's like the perfect thing. Like when you're home alone and then you get high and you're high alone, like it's like, there's literally nothing better. <laughs> and I think that's more what pulls you away from the social aspect is like, fuck, like I gotta go out and like, talk to people and like, I don't know, like be in a conversation. I can just sit here and watch a show instead. But then when you actually get out there and you actually do it and you're like, you're not resisting being out with your friends and you're actually there, um, it's a it's a overall like much more positive experience. But at the same time, being by yourself and smoking weed is fantastic. <laughs>
Okay, what you said is really interesting. And this is something I've kind of learned about pot not from a novice position. You know, I smoked regularly for three years. I've smoked weed in the White House uh, while shooting a documentary. And so for zeroing in, for single tasking, for enjoying the moment as it is, it's remarkable. Weed was the one thing where I could smoke and edit for eight hours at a job. I could, I couldn't read that well, but I could really get into those singularly focused flow state activities that you're talking about. Now the problem that happens with that, when everything you're doing, whether it's washing dishes or editing, or for me it was building furniture as a task rabbit for a long period of time, you can do that thing with the full force of your being and you don't ever question yourself and go, Maybe I should be socializing with the full force of my being. Maybe I should ask for a raise at work. Maybe I should take initiative to get a better job. You know, how many people do we know who have the nicest triple percolated bong contraption and have been working at a restaurant for seven years and they're just the bong guy at the restaurant? That critical part of your brain that goes, God, I just, I'm itching because I don't feel like I'm growing right now, somewhat turns off. And I've actually had this experience with a number of different drugs specifically um, Adderall, which I had a problem with, alcohol, which I certainly had a problem with. A drug is meant to be a means to an end, but quickly, when it becomes a dependency issue, it becomes an end in itself. So you, maybe you've had the experience of going to a party and taking a couple shots to build up that liquid courage, but then two or three years later, you're going to the party and going straight to the kitchen or the bar to pour yourself a drink, and you realize, I'm not even here for the people, I'm here for an excuse to booze. A lot of things that you do, even like watching a movie in 3D, are an excuse to get really, really high. I found that I was using weed to bribe myself into getting some creative work done, but the creative work itself, the, the tingle of inspiration, the feeling of challenging yourself with a new project, putting something out there that you're uncomfortable with, overcoming, what Nietzsche called, overcome, overcome. That's na man's natural instinct. That's when he feels most alive. Anything that just pulls from every fiber of your being makes you uncomfortable, which is in some ways the opposite of smoking weed, is what tends to grow you. So I find that people who are already on the path, they're doing jujitsu, they're an NBA player, and they need to get 16 hour days in. That can be a tool to help them do essentially what they're already doing, marathon runners. You're already, you have a goal, it's set up, you've got a regiment in place, and you can take this thing that gets you into a flow state and remind you of the feeling of doing it for the first time. But if you don't have a path in place and you're kind of just floating around through life, you're quickly gonna end up in a box of Cheetos, doing some Xbox, watching virtual reality pornography, and calling your ex-girlfriend, but then hanging out before the second ring. So do you feel like you can achieve that same flow state totally sober? You know, I haven't really done a good job explaining the benefits of my <laughs> sobriety. I kind of just dived in, weed's awesome for this and it's great for this. I really miss it, man. Can you blow it in my face later? Yes, there's some part of me that uh, misses what I can't have for sure. But overall, I'll tell you what the benefits are. You have created a drug as an end in itself, right? When you take away that end, you have to replace it with a different end. So if I go to a party and I can't immediately go to the corner and take a shot or immediately go over to the weird room that always exists in a party where there's a tapestry on the wall and this guy with cornrows is giving you a, uh, a hit of the bong. If I can't do that immediately, I have to create another end in the party. And the end for me has been meeting people, approaching people, talking about what I'm doing, trying to make connections. So I might go out completely sober and dance on a bar. I might go up to somebody on the street and say hello. In fact, you know, the last seven planes I've been on, I spent the whole time talking to the person next to me. I have this feeling, you wake up, you don't have the immediate trigger of, I can take my happy drug, so you have to sign up for a marathon or have a really serious conversation with yourself about how your life itself can start supplying you with what the drug was supplying you with before. To answer your question about flow state though, that remains elusive. With so many different ways to kind of uh, trigger your brain when you're not just coming back with a reliable thing like marijuana, it can be very hard to focus on one thing at the detriment of everything else. Mm -hmm. And that's still something I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, and I do have a rule of every year I take at least two full months where I don't smoke weed. And it was never like, I'm gonna do it June and October or January and July. Like it was never fixed months. I just always went off my gut. 
and it was like I need to take a break from this and just kind of reassess my goals and maybe my values and where I want to be in the next few years and those months that I did take totally sober I actually made some huge leaps that I might not have if I just kept smoking weed through those uh, months the other thing is being really high for me at least is a terrible first impression especially for somebody who's not high <laughs> there's that first impression that is now like tarnished just because of weed and then the third one that is probably the worst one or at least the most inconvenient is my long-term and short-term memory just useless at this point when I take those months where I'm totally sober if you ask me what happened four days ago at like 4 p.m. it's like right there like I'd I need very little time to just kind of look back and remember what happened. But now if you ask me that, I gotta look through my calendar, like ask some friends what happened, maybe like look through some like old texts. I really need a lot of time to like figure that out. Yeah, one of the more compelling bits of research that's come out in the anti-pot camp is that it has a real effect on learning and memory. And that might have a little bit to do with what it does to sleep. You know, it it prevents you from dreaming. That's something that a lot of people who quit smoking pot notice. They have these insane dreams that just come pouring into their heads. And I think if you're dreaming, that's also suggesting that you're having deep REM sleep, which is the time when memories are consolidated in the brain. So for general skill building, it's a good idea to either smoke less or take breaks, like you said. The other thing you brought up was socializing uh, with new people. And while this study showed that people who smoke pot maybe want to socialize more, one of the feelings I got was that, are you better at socializing? I, I watched a podcast with myself and I was stoned out of my gills and I was just giggling the whole time. Just, <laughs> you know, like I got very giggly, eyes down a lot, difficulty holding eye contact. And what I've become as a sober person is actually probably annoying to some people, but it's somebody who can walk into a room, feel confident, command a certain level of attention, look somebody in the eyes and say, I like what you're doing, where can I find the bathroom? I have to take a diarrhea. It's just a feeling of going through life without that nagging doubt in the back of your head. And that's something I did, I did struggle with when I was high all the time, because you always have the option to just to retreat into your happy place. And uh, when you're out here in the barren desert of sobriety, there's no happy place left. <laughs> you better learn how to like the cold, you know what I mean? And sometimes it's cold rejection, sometimes it's overcoming a fear, sometimes it's just entertaining yourself on stage by saying something crazy, just so you can get some peak moments. And uh, all of those things coming together, I think train you to exist in this highly volatile social landscape that we live in. More so than the quiet comforts of the sweater that is marijuana. If you wanna be someone's lackey, smoke pot all day, every day, you'll be an awesome programmer. But if you want to command attention and be a leader and start making bold decisions, you have to throw off the jacket, get out into the cold and be willing to walk out there on your own. And I found that without a crutch, I'm much more likely to do that. SHUT UP! All right, so is there any takeaway from this video? Um, how do no. we... <laughs> yes, there is. I think we're all wondering if marijuana is right for us, if it's what we should be doing or shouldn't be doing, or like if we're stressing about it too much, or maybe it's the cause of anxiety or blah, 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 blah. So many thoughts, because we're all thinking too much because of the marijuana, but here's the reason. <laughs> I was at a point in community college where I was taking like heavy bong rips, multiple bong rips daily throughout the day. That's too much weed for me. I really like smoking weed, but I was doing it too much and it was messing everything up in my life. But I didn't want to give it up, so I reduced the amount greatly. I reduced it to one bong hit a day, and then I reduced it to one pipe hit a day, and then one little vape stick hit a day. And then I found the point where I don't have to give it up. I'm getting more good out of it than bad, I think, at this point. And I think that's the way you have to figure it out. It's like, are you smoking all day and you, you're doing it to numb this pain and deep down the whole time you're smoking every day, you're actually miserable the whole time. Maybe marijuana is not right for you. Maybe you need to take the month off like I did, or maybe you just never need to smoke weed ever again. But are you happy? And are you achieving your goals? And are you forming goals? Like, do you not have any goals because you're smoking too much weed? Then maybe you should stop smoking weed and get some goals. Because ultimately all we're trying to do is achieve our wildest dreams and be happy with uh, our lives before we die. And uh, weed might help and it might not. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say is this, I quit these drugs this time around, not when I was at rock bottom. That's typically what you do. I quit when I was at rock top. And I felt like in order to ride this wave and not just let it plateau, I want something to burst me forward even more. At this point in my life, I'm 30. I haven't accomplished what I want to accomplish. I want that fire inside of me, even if it annoys people. I want to go to bed ready to start the next day, and I want to wake up ready to kick out the door. I want to hit the ground running. 
I wouldn't advise that for everybody. I mean, we've all met somebody who's just a bundle of anxiety because they're always go, go, go. However, if you have reached the point where maybe you're ready to turn the thrusters up and rock it into the next level, I don't think you want any kind of crutch holding you back. You don't want comfort. You want discomfort. You want to be embracing the feeling of just being alive with all of your faculties at full force, just to see where that can get you, just as an experiment. You know, and then maybe when you've got something in place that you're just maintaining, that's when you go back, you've learned, you've acquired information, that's when you go back into the flow-like practice that you were talking about before. I have replaced the giant hole in my heart that was left by drugs and, and alcohol with a lot of what I would call beneficial addictions. So, if you're looking for the next level, sobriety is gonna do it. It's just gonna do it for you. You've got nowhere else to turn. It's almost a surefire way to make sure you're gonna make at least some good decisions because you don't have much of a choice. However, you know, where I was when I first started smoking weed, I was an alcoholic. Before that, I was a pill addict. I do what it's called the, the daisy chain of addictions, okay? Go from alcohol to pills to weed to running to sobriety. You want to slowly replace what you're using to buttress your life with better, more benign addictions until you're at the place where, yes, you can just wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night without anything and still feel motivated. Not, I gotta set up my uh, grinder real quick. Uh, I do a little, put a little keef on top of that. Oh, nice. Oh, somebody called me. Yeah, you wanna come over and chief? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, cool, man. All right. Have you seen that new Bojack hey, don't, Horseman? Don't be degrading, right? All right, all right. <laughs> you guys are annoying sometimes. <laughs> Any other thoughts? Dan Bolzerian smokes weed. <laughs> Think Dude. about it. By the way, we will be doing <laughs> ayahuasca in July. You don't have to give everything up, you know? Uh, <laughs> and I am thinking about eating a macro dose of edibles uh, just to see what taking several months off and then diving into the uh, paranoid center of the universe looks like. Roommate and friend Oliver Tang. Devin Green here signing out. Coming from Denver. Check this place out. Yeah. The trees are red and skinny. All the trees look like this. Ah!